Kia ora. This is Kia ora Oz. Welcome to the channel. I'm Darren and this is the continuation of a lap that my late wife Selena and I started in June of 2023. After her passing I decided to continue the journey solo, safe in the knowledge that she will always be a part of my journey. Follow along and find out what it's like to travel this vast continent solo. Ka kite. Kia ora Oz, kia ora whanau. welcome to the second part uh, of my Kakadu journey. Um, so I'm pulling out today, it's a travel day today. I'm going to head up to the other end of the park. Um, technically I'll be in the Merry River National Park, but it's so close it might as well be Kakadu. Um, um, like I said in part one, a lot of this stuff has been closed seasonal closures, so I haven't been able to go to some of the places I wanted to see. I'll come back and do those from Darwin as a day trip, I think. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to head up to Mary River National Park and um, um, camp at Shady Camp, where I was uh, when the buffalo came across the river, uh, and have a couple of days fishing um, and see if I can't get myself uh, a barra or two. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm head off today and, and do that. Um, and then have a look at anything else down around that area uh, that might be worth having a look at before I head into Darwin on Monday. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm up to and we'll bring you along. Um, Sam's fun fact. So when I've been driving around here and going from place to place, it's been all of these spot fires. I keep coming across these spot fires. Some a little bit bigger than others. Um, and at first I thought, oh, someone's bloody thrown a cigarette out or something. But um, no, as it turns out, they're, um, they've all been del lit deliberately, which I s sort of figured after I'd seen a, a half a dozen of them. Um, and essentially what happens is that Kakadu's traditional owners um, and the park service um, light these fires uh, at the um, um, at the end of the wet season or the beginning of the dry um, to protect land and country. So um, uh, traditional owners and parks Australia staff use the wetter months in January and February to their advantage. Wet season burning is particularly effective in reducing high fuel levels. Um, and then they do uh, quite a bit during the cooler months as well, before the end of the dry when uh, it can get um, a bit out of control. Um, fire generates new life, uh, and by using it as a land management tool, um, the indigenous people of the area can support a diverse habitat that provides food and shelter for wildlife, and while also reducing the chance of wildfires burning out of control during the hotter, drier months. So there you go. They were all delivered. All right, so um, pack up, hook up, and head off. So if you're coming into Shady Camp, uh, it's not a bad run. The last 28 kilometers into the camp is dirt. But it's not too rough except for about the last five clicks, which is still not too rough. Yeah. It's pretty easy actually. 
So, yeah, if you come into the shady camp, just be aware the last 30 clicks or last 28 clicks is, is a dirt road. I don't know if you can see that out there, but there's a, a truck making its way across the river. I've got a photo in. Damn, but that's the third one, it's still not big enough. Camp yesterday from Kuinda to Shady Camp Billabong, which is where I am now. So you will have seen the video of me attempting to catch a barra for dinner and not achieving that. I can't look up a fun fact because I've got no internet, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, mate of mine, Greg's come to um, catch up for the morning, and we're going to go and try and get some more fish done um, and so uh, here tonight and tomorrow night and then Monday trucking on into Darwin so yesterday just hung out here got camp set up and then um, we can truck the lure in for about I don't know must have been two hours yeah right though yeah yeah got nearly a dozen I think they were but they were all too small so we're going to see if we can get a bigger one today. Four crocs hanging around. Sam's fun fact. In this place here, apparently, at the right time of year and the right tides, etc., it's the highest concentration of crocodiles of anywhere in the Northern Territory. In the world, I reckon. In the world? Yeah. There yeah. you go. So, yep. So, uh... Greg works for Big W, been up here doing a store visit, and uh, he's supposed to be working today, but he's... Don't tell anyone, it's Sunday, it's not but, Saturday. <laughs> but he's skived, he's, skived off, he's skived off from work and come here to go fishing instead. In, so my, little, in my little Corolla. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's fishing on Woolworths' dime. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to uh, get the rods ready and go and have a flick. We'll take it with us. That's a bit too close. Hey? That's a bit too close. <laughs> yeah, I've heard stories. 
stories from some of the rangers You know, it's always a bit iconic to me, or surreal even, when I'm sitting outside the van, my dinner cooking on a campfire. And at the end of the camp, there's a couple of kangaroos grazing. <laughs> I don't know if you can see them on camera, they're just over there. Anyway, in the twilight, a couple of kangaroos over there grazing, little ones. But yeah, always, always seems iconic to me. A kangaroo goes bounding by or some other Australian animal and I'm sitting by a fire cooking my dinner. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately tonight, it's uh, lamb leg steaks. And mushrooms, because I didn't catch a big enough barramundi. Caught another three today. The guy next to me got one that was 53 centimeters. The legal limit's 55. I'm not sure I could have been um, I'm not sure I couldn't have been tempted with a 53 centimetre barramundi, it was a good, good barramundi. But anyway, like my mother-in-law says, it's a hard life when you've got to have lamb steaks instead of barramundi because you didn't catch one big enough. Morena. So still at set Shady Camp, uh, this is my last day here. Um, so I'm out of here tomorrow morning and heading to Darwin. Um, so, yeah. Uh, not a lot of activity apart from me fishing all day yesterday, which will probably be the same today. So, not sure we'll get uh, too much exciting footage, um, but uh, I will I will f film the the ride into Darwin and places I stop on my way into Darwin tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to head out now and and do some more fishing. Um, <coughs> Sam's fun fact. Uh, the barramundi that we're after in, nor in the Northern Territory need to be 55 centimetres. Um, barramundi uh, can um, exist in both fresh water and salt water. And here at the weir, one side is uh, fresh water and the other side is tidal seawater. So, um, yeah, you can do both sides when the tide's in. Uh, you can fish the saltwater side, or you can fish it either, either side, but it's easier when the tide's in. Uh, and um, when it's out, you fish the fresh side. Okay, all right, so uh, I'm going to head out and try and get me a legally sized barramundi again.
Ben. Um, so today I will finish my run up the guts, as it were. Um, travel day today and heading into Darwin. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that'll be uh, that'll be me having done Port Augusta to Darwin, so right up the middle of the of the continent, um, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, so for um, Sam's fun fact. Most of the trip has been uh, up the Stuart Highway. Um, so, the Stuart Highway from Port Augusta through to Darwin has a distance of 2,720 kilometres. So, I will have done 2,720, well, a little bit more than that because I just had a slight detour to the Udna Data track. Right, um, and it is the principal north-south route through the central interior of mainland Australia. Um, uh, the highway is often referred to simply as the track. Um, and it's named after Scottish explorer John McDoodle Stewart, who was the first European to cross Australia from south to north. The highway approximates the route Stewart took. So there you go easier for me when I did it but uh, basically the same thing all right so into Darwin today uh, and then I'm going to be in Darwin for close on oh, close on six weeks so we'll do a couple of videos from up in Darwin I'm in three separate camps one at um, Lee Point one sort of central Darwin and and then uh, the final one I'll go out to a place called Dundee Beach so anyway you'll see that all and uh, yeah I'll take you along so we're coming into Darwin first signs of civilization for a while <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we'll be in this first stop for 13 days um, at Lee Point in Darwin, in the, um, in the Lee Point Holiday Resort Van Park. Good to see diesel under $2, $1.95. Wow, it's as cheapest I've seen diesel I don't, I don't know how long. Probably since Port Augusta. Anyway, there's a Woolworths over there that I can see, so I'll be stocking up once I've unhooked and done all of that. And uh, yeah, so we'll end this video here, so don't forget to subscribe. Doesn't cost you anything. Give us a like and uh, make any comments. I'd like to know what you think. Alright, so we'll sign off here and uh, we'll see you on the Darwin videos. Ka kite.